Calculating Rate of Change in Earth Science How to Apply Problem Solving Skills to Earth Science Problems The rate of change formula is one you're going to encounter a lot in your earth science units and there's going to be a variety of questions that are applied to the same formula and on the first page of your reference table is this formula so the rate of change is asking the change in value meaning what is changing and by how much and you're taking that change and you're dividing by whatever time it took for the change to take place so the best way to to do this is to jump right into a problem so here's an example of a rate of change problem involving cooling of water. The temperature of water in a container was 100 degrees Celsius. 15 minutes later the water temperature was 40 degrees Celsius. What was the rate of cooling of the water? So we're going to imagine that a beaker of water was heated to boiling and now that heat was shut off and it's cooling. So we're still using that formula. So for a rate of change we need to figure out what is changing in the problem and by how much and then we're going to be dividing that by the time the change occurred over so we have to think well what is changing in this problem and this is a word problem you need to go back and read carefully so it's changing obviously here is the water temperature and by how much it's changing from 100 to 40 degrees Celsius and the time it changed over is given in the problem it's 15 minutes that it cooled over so that's the first thing you need to do you need to identify these two values and now we need to substitute in and calculate it So for our change in value, it, we're going to do some subtraction. 100 degrees minus 40 degrees Celsius gives us 60 degrees Celsius. So that is how much the water cooled by 60 degrees Celsius. And then we simply divide by 15 minutes. So 60 degrees Celsius divided by 15 minutes gives us 4 degrees Celsius per minute as our answer. And the important thing for rate of change problems is that there are two units involved. It's called a double unit kind of problem. If you just write 4 degrees Celsius in your answer, you're not fully correct. It's important to have the same units in your answer that you had when you substituted in. So 4 degrees Celsius per minute written like this is is the best way to go and we'll keep, keep talking about this in the later problems all right here's another type of a rate of change problem where we have to track a hurricane and calculate its rate of speed over a certain time so we're here we have the famous superstorm sandy and we can see the path it took in the ocean and then when it hit land. It also gives us times when that data was taken. So the problem is asking to calculate the average daily rate of movement of Superstorm Sandy from Monday through Wednesday. So the Again, always go to that formula, look it up in your reference table. Writing it down is a good idea when you're doing these types of problems. For this time, the time is easier to start with because we're going from Monday through Wednesday and it's asking for a daily rate of change. So since both of them are 8 a.m., it's just two days. 8 a.m. Monday to 8 a.m. Wednesday is two days exactly. So that's really the easy part of this problem. 
The more challenging part is the change, which we're going to go into now. So the change in value is going to be the location of the hurricane and how far it moved in those two days. So we're going to be calculating its movement in miles. So how are we going to calculate how far it moved in miles? We're going to need a map scale. And so the map scale has been put there below and any kind of a problem that involves this is going to have to have a map scale for you to use if it doesn't tell you the number of miles it moved in the problem. So what you can do is on a piece of scrap paper you can draw a line from 8 a.m. Monday to 8 a.m. Wednesday. So I have a yellow line here but you have to imagine that you have a piece of scrap paper there and on that paper you marked the where 8 a.m. Monday is and where 8 a.m. Wednesday is on it. Now you have to imagine you moving that scrap paper to your map scale. That's the great thing about doing it on the scrap paper is you can move it directly to the scale and now we can read off the scale and determine how far Superstorm Sandy moved from Monday through Wednesday. And if you look at that map scale you can see that it moved approximately 360 miles in that time. So it looks like that line extends a little beyond the 350, so that's my estimate. If you said silent like 355, that would be okay too. You can probably even um, be okay with 370, although that's a little bit high from what I'm seeing here. So now we have the information we have to substitute in. So our rate of change, what it moved was the 360 miles we just did. We determined earlier that it was over two days of time. And now our answer is going to be doing the math 360 divided by 2, but we also need to factor in the units. And we have miles in the numerator on top and days in the denominator, so we need to have those also. So our final answer is going to be 180 miles per day. 360 divided by 2 is 180. And we have miles on top and days on the bottom. But when you do a rate of change, you're always going to end up being over one. One day, one year, or some other unit of time. One hour and so on. Now, what happens if the problem asks for an hourly rate of movement of Superstorm Sandy? It's actually the same problem, except that Instead of two days, we're going to have to know that there's 24 hours in a day. So two days is going to be 48 hours. 48 hours and 360 divided by 48 is going to give us 7.5. But now our units are not miles per day, it's miles per hour. So our final answer here is 7.5 miles per hour. That's how fast the hurricane was moving. All right, moving on, now we have a weathering problem. Weathering means to break down. So rocks and minerals break down due to the environment, air and water and ice over time. So in this problem, we're gonna imagine we have two minerals, gypsum and quartz, and we have 80 grams of each. They're placed into a container with a lid and shaken for four minutes. And during this time, the gypsum and the quartz are colliding against each other in the walls of the container. After four minutes of shaking, the mass of the two minerals was measured again. The gypsum had a mass of 35 grams, and the quartz still had a mass of 80 grams. So our problem is, what is the rate of weathering of the gypsum? Because clearly the quartz did not weather. So, here we go again, same formula, but again, each time you have to identify the change in value and what's the time. So we're thinking about, well, how much did the mass change in the gypsum? 
And what length of time did that gypsum weather over? So to get that change in the gypsum, we need to do the math. It started with 80 and ended with 35. So 80 minus 35 grams gives us 45 grams. Our time is over four minutes. So our rate of change is 45 grams over four minutes. And 45 divided by four is 11.3. And our units are gonna be grams per minute. So notice the basic idea of the problem is not changing. It's just what we're substituting in and what those units are, which is really important. And our final problem we're gonna practice here is a movement of volcanic ash. And it's gonna involve using a map scale again. So here's the problem. The eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980 resulted in the movement of volcanic ash across the northwestern United States. The movement of ash at 1.5 kilometers above sea level is shown as a shaded path on the map. The times marked on the path indicate the length of time the leading edge of the ash cloud took to travel from Mount St. Helens to each location. So that's just an introduction to the problem. We haven't even gotten to the problem, which is calculate the average rate of movement for the volcanic ash for the first 21 hours. So this is a lot like our hurricane problem earlier, and we're going to apply the same idea using a map scale. All right, so our formula hasn't changed for change. So we're identifying how far that ash cloud moved in 21 hours, and the time obviously is the 21 hours here. That value for the ash being 1.5 kilometers is not needed for the problem. So sometimes these problems have extra numbers you don't need and you have to be careful you identify that. That's just an extra on the regions that might be used for another question, but for this one we don't need it. So now we're going to imagine this time we took a piece of scrap paper and we drew the map scale on it. So this is another way to do a map scale problem. Reproduce the map scale on scrap paper. On your test, you can draw a line from Mount St. Helens where the ash started to the 21 hour mark. And now we're gonna bring our scrap paper that we redrew that scale on to our line. And it's pretty obvious what this distance is over 21 hours. It matches up perfectly with that 450 kilometer mark. So here is our problem. We're going 450 kilometers in 21 hours, and our answer is going to be 450 divided by 21. Really easy when you use your calculator. But the units are different this time. They're going to be kilometers per hour. And when we do the math and we round to the nearest whole number, we get 21 kilometers per hour. All right, so here's, those are some nice examples of rate of change. You can refer to that idea and go back to this presentation if you need it when you do your problems at home.